Joanna Schopenhauer Joanna Schopenhauer was a German author. She is today known primarily for being the mother of Arthur Schopenhauer. Joanna Schopenhauer was born in Gdansk, the crown of the Kingdom of Poland, to a family of wealthy merchants of Dutch extraction. Her father, Christian Heinrich Trojaner, was also a senator in the city. At 18 years of age she married Heinrich Floris Schopenhauer, a rich merchant 20 years her senior. He was to become the father of her two children, Arthur and Adele Schopenhauer. In 1806, shortly after her husband's death, Joanna and Adele moved to Weimar. She had no relatives or close acquaintances in that city. The reason she chose Weimar, then the center of German literary life, as her new residence, is rumored to have been the desire to meet Gouda. At the time of Joanna's arrival, however, Weimar was on the brink of a war against France, French military troops commanded by Napoleon were heading to the city, and combat broke out shortly after Joanna and Adele's arrival. It's thought that, even though it was widely known that a conflict between France and Weimar was imminent, Joanna didn't know of that danger before she arrived in the city. Though transportation out of the city was available to her and her daughter, she decided to stay in Weimar as she didn't want to leave her servants to their own luck. During wartime Joanna was very active at the local scene, she harbored German officials arrived in the city, and they dined at her house, volunteered to nurse wounded soldiers, and sheltered many of the less fortunate Weimar citizens whose homes French soldiers had taken over. As a result, she quickly became very popular in Weimar. Past the war, she earned a good reputation as Salonier. For years to come literary celebrities, for example Goethe, Wieland, the Schlegel brothers August and Friedrich, and Tieck, twice a week gathered in her house. As proven by letter she exchanged with her son, her plan to host Germany's greatest minds and salon reunions had been made before she moved out of Hamburg. Gouda's endorsement was a major factor behind Joanna's quick social success. Joanna was the first upper-class woman in Weimar society to willingly open the doors of her house to Gouda's wife, Christiane Vulpius, who was of lower-class background and a mistress of Gouda's before legally marrying him during the French invasion. And in gratitude, Gouda became one of the first and most commonly seen figures in Joanna's reunions, which alone ensured the popularity of her parties. At first, Arthur Schopenhauer didn't move to Weimar along with his family, he instead remained in Hamburg. Due to a promise he had made to his father, which Arthur refused to break even after Henrik Floris's death, he felt obliged to go on with his merchant apprenticeship. Joanna had a difficult relationship with her famous son. Upon moving to Weimar in 1809, Arthur didn't settle in his mother's home, but to that of his young instructor, Franz Passo, for his mother didn't want to live with him. Many of the extant letters she wrote him attest to her exasperation towards Arthur's pessimistic outlook on life, his haughtiness, and his assertive manners. Though in 1813 she at last permitted him to live with her, the arrangement soon failed. A year later Joanna asked her son to leave the house following a heated argument between the two of them over Joanna's friendship with her lodger a younger man named Georg van Christenberg. From 1814 onwards, mother and son no longer met. Thenceforth all communication between the two happened by means of correspondence, but even this changed after she read a letter Arthur sent to his sister, about their father's death, where Arthur pointed to Joanna as being responsible for the tragedy, rumored to be a suicide, saying that, whilst their father was bedridden by illness, Joanna amused herself in social reunions and abandoned her husband to the care of an employee. Still, in 1819 Arthur made a move to re-establish his family bonds. In that year, the Schopenhauer ladies had lost the greater part of their fortune due to a bank crisis, and Arthur expressed willingness to share with them his portion of his inheritance, an offer Joanna dismissed. Only in 1831 did their correspondence resume, it continued in sporadic fashion until Joanna's death in 1838. Apparently the philosopher's many difficulties, the ill fate of his books, the failure of his brief career as a teacher at Berlin University, and also some physical ailments, led him to again seek contact with his family. But Joanna and Arthur Schopenhauer would never again meet in person. As a matter of fact, even after her death, Schopenhauer continued to speak against her, making little of her skills as a mother and portraying her as an all around selfish person. In her will, Joanna Schopenhauer made it tell her sole heir that she probably did not do out of spite for her son, for, Whilst Arthur lived economically and was well off, having not only preserved but even doubled his hair of his father's wealth, Adele, as Joanna foresaw, would experience financial difficulties after her mother's death, something in which the spendthrift Joanna played no small role. In Weimar Joanna Schopenhauer made a name as an author. 
She was the first German woman writer to publish books without making use of a pseudonym. During a little more than a decade, from the late 1810s to the early 1830s, her literary production turned her into the most famous woman author in Germany. In 1831, her writings received a second edition at Brockhaus Publishing House. The collected Evers filled no less than 24 volumes. Nothing, however, could compensate for those financial setbacks. For reasons of ill health, Joanna and Adele Schopenhauer, being no longer able to maintain their lifestyle in Weimar, moved to Bonn. In the middle 1830s, their situation would deteriorate further as Joanna's fame decayed. Almost without resources, Joanna wrote to the Duke of Weimar, speaking of her plight. In 1837, the Duke, in acknowledgement of her former fame, offered her a small pension and invited her, and also Adele, to live in Jena. There Joanna died the following year. She left incomplete the manuscript of a last work, her autobiography, whose contents narrate her early life until Arthur's birth. It was not long after her arrival in Weimar that Joanna began to publish her writings, some articles on paintings with an emphasis on Jan van Eyck's work. In 1810, she published her first book, a biography of her friend Carl Ludwig for now who had died two years before Dot she wrote it with the intention to pay his heir's debts with his editor. As the book met with critical success, Joanna felt stimulated to pursue a career as an author, a career on which her livelihood would depend, after the aforementioned financial difficulties. First came the publication of her travelogues, which were also acclaimed, and then of her fiction work, which, for a little more than a decade, made her the most famous female author in Germany. The following are her best-known novels, Gabrielle. Ditanta and Sidonia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.